In this subunit, we'll explore the bifurcation diagram for the logistic map further and deeper. To do so, we'll use the uh, web program to zoom in on different regions of the bifurcation diagram. Before doing that, I just want to remind you once again of how a bifurcation diagram is formed. So a bifurcation diagram is a collection of final state diagrams. So we'll need to make a lot of final state diagrams. And so for each of those final state diagrams in the collection, we need to choose R. And then how we've been doing it so far is we'll iterate for 100 um, time steps, 100 iterations. And then we'll plot the next 200 iterations. And then you'll repeat for a whole bunch of different R values. And then one would glue together, smoosh together, line up um, all of those final state diagrams, and you'll get a bifurcation diagram, which would give you at a glimpse the different behaviors possible over a whole range of R values. As we zoom in to the bifurcation diagram to look more closely at some of its structures and patterns, we're going to need to change these numbers. Sometimes we'll need to ask the computer to iterate for more than a hundred times, maybe a thousand or even more. And other times, for a different reason, we'll need to plot more than just 200 points. So this number 100 and 200, those are the defaults that I've been using so far, but we'll need to change these um, when we do our explorations. So let's get started and look at the bifurcation diagram and start zooming in and see what we see. Here's the bifurcation diagram program. And I resized um, both the browser window and this uh, image size so it fits well in the screen. So let's start zooming in. The interesting action happens over here on the right. So I'll zoom in. And there's a close-up view. And I don't know, let's say I want to see what's going on in this little region here in the middle. Oops. So let's zoom in on that region. And I'll zoom in once more. So again, I'm seeing this, this motif, this pattern that we see occur again and again. But as I've zoomed in so much, I've in a sense lost uh, almost resolution. There aren't that many points here. And the reason for that is that the X range is now very small. I'm going from 0 0.478 to 0 0.488 approximately. So I'm seeing just a very tiny slice, a very tiny portion of a long um, uh, final state diagram. So um, for each R value, we plotted 200 points, but most of the points fall off the screen. They're above or below this little slice. So I need to do something so that I can see more points if I want to see what the pattern looks like in here. And so I'm going to increase the number here. I'm going to skip 100, but now rather than plotting the next 200, I'll plot the next 2,000. So let me update that. And pretty quickly, um, I can see a, the image is a lot darker. That means there are a lot more points, and I can see the structure. I can see what's going on there. Um, so this effect of the image becoming grainy or sort of losing resolution, it's as if you're zooming in on an old sort of analog photograph and you literally um, just sort of run out of resolution. You start to see individual grains or pixels. So the strategy here when you zoom in and start to l lose dots is to just ask the program to plot more dots. It's important though when doing these zooms to not ask the program to plot too many dots too soon. And the reason for that is, is that the slowest part of this program is the plotting. And by plotting, I mean the actual rendering of each of these pixels on the screen. That's the slowest step. The um, computer, when it does its iterations, that actually is, is a very fast process. So um, here I'm asking the program to plot 2,000 for each R value, but it actually doesn't plot 2,000 when I zoom in because most of the um, iterates for a particular R value, say where I am right now, 
are going to fall outside of this narrow interval. And so asking it to plot these extra points actually doesn't slow the program down too much. So let me illustrate that as follows. Let's say I really got excited and I wanted it to do um, 20,000 uh, points. So calculate 20,000 points and then plot them. This will take a little bit of time, but still not much. Let's give it a try. One, two, three. So that took about three seconds. And by the way, this is, um, to, to, if I wanted to look at this, uh, understand this image, this would actually be too many points. It's maybe a little bit like an overexposed photograph or something. But in any event, asking it to do all of this iteration, I think it does about 100 R values, skip being the first 100, and then iterating for another 20,000 um, only took about three seconds. And that's because I wasn't asking it to actually plot that many. Um, let me go back to, let's say, let's go back to this image. If I ask this to do 20,000, it's going to take a long time. Let's see how long. It might even take too long. Let's give it a try. One, two, three, four. All right, so that took about four seconds, longer than it did um, before. Let me go back a little bit more. Let's try this. Give this one a shot. One, two, three, four, five. 26, 27, 28. Okay, so that took almost 30 seconds. So the moral of the story is, when you zoom in, you start to lose resolution because there aren't enough points plotted, so you want to ask the program to plot more points for you. However, don't ask the program to plot more points for you until you need it, because um, plotting takes a long time and uh, the program will become very slow to work with. Okay, so as we zoom in, moral of the story, we need to ask the computer to plot more points, and we don't want it to plot too many points, we don't ask it to plot too many points too soon. There is another issue or subtlety that arises when zooming in on the bifurcation diagram that's different from the simply losing resolution, not having enough points issue that I talked about previously. So let me illustrate this. I'll zoom in here. Let, oops. Let's zoom in here and see what's going on. So this is where the bifurcation from period 2 to period 4 occurs. And maybe I want to look right in at that point. Do that. And we start to see some weird structure here. Some I don't know, this almost looks like feathering on my screen. I'm not sure what it'll look like on the video. Um, and so, going back, we expect, we can even show this analytically, we're going from period one, or sorry, period two to period four. And so we see periodic behavior, a single narrow line, just a single dot on the um, uh, final state diagram. But here in this region, right near where the bifurcation occurs, the single point that we would expect to see for period two or period four, this, these single narrow lines, they fuzz out, they blur out here. And to see why that's the case, let's go and look at the um, time series plot for, say, this R value right here, 3.44568. So here's the program that makes time series plots for the logistic equation. And I want to know what's going on for the R value 3.44568. That's where we're starting to see this sort of surprising fuzz or smearing in the bifurcation diagram. So let's make the time series plot. And there it is. And it's maybe a little bit hard to see, but it looks like it's almost period two so up, down, but that's, um, it's actually period four. So there's a little bit of difference between these two um, lower points. And if I were to, so if I were to plot this on a um, bifurcation diagram, or a, sorry, a final state diagram, 
I would have actually four points, two up here, two down there, and they'll be very close together. However, um, in a final state diagram, which is what bifurcation diagrams are made of, we're interested, well, in the final state, the long-term behavior. So to check, let's see what's going on for larger numbers of iterates. So I, again, I can still see that there's sort of this period, like it's period two, but not quite. There's a little bit of a wiggle in here. But maybe it actually is eventually going to become period two. Here I am plotting a thousand points, and by this point it's, re it's really hard to see on this figure. Um, let's go down here and look at just these last couple of numbers. If I wait for a thousand time steps, so I have to iterate for a long time, then it actually has become period two. Right? I've got 0 .44085, 0 .84937, 0 .44085 back again. It's gone into a period two cycle. So when R is 3.44568, in the long run, it really is period two, not almost period two, but actually period four. But in the long run here is actually a pretty long time. If I just wait for the hundred um, iterates that we've been doing before, it still looks like it's period four when it's actually period two. So um, another way of saying this is that the transitory or temporary behavior for this is very long lived. It takes a long time to reach the final state. Another way, yet another way of saying this is that there's a period two attractor but it's not that strong an attractor. It doesn't pull in orbits very quickly. In this case, it takes a thousand iterations in order for the um, for the orbit, the time series plot, to reach the attractor. So this means that we'll have to um, plot, uh, have the program, when we do the bifurcation diagram, have the program skip plotting more iterates in order to see the long-term behavior. So let's go back to the bifurcation diagram program and see what, um, see what we can do. So here we are back at the bifurcation diagram program again. And I'm going to change this number here. So skip plotting first 100 iterations. Instead, I'm going to ask it to skip 1,000 iterations. So what the program will do now is, for each R value, it will plot, a, it will uh, compute a thousand iterates, and then it will plot the next 200 iterates. So I'm changing this to a thousand. Let's update the plot, and all of a sudden we see that the smudginess has gone away. So here we're seeing this sort of almost period two, but actually period four um, behavior as it wiggles around back and forth, not quite hitting the period two attractor. But if we wait longer, uh, whoops, sorry. If we wait longer, then the period two attractor gets reached and this thing clears itself up. I could, however, zoom in here again. And now again, I see that same sort of smudginess or smearing. And again, this indicates that we're not quite reaching an attractor. So I'm going to change this so that I skip plotting uh, 10,000. So now we're asking the program to calculate 10,000 iterates for each R value, ignore those, and then plot the next 200. If we do that, this is what it looks like. Again, the um, smudginess, the long-term behavior goes away when we wait longer, and we see the nice, in this case, period two to period four transition. So as we zoom in on the bifurcation diagram to look deeper and deeper to probe its inner structure, we're going to need to sometimes ask it to skip more iterations and sometimes ask it to plot more orbits. So um, we'll do that in the next video.